Rugby World Cup warm-up games, folks. This weekend just gone. Top five players. Who were the standouts from these Summer Nations Series games? Obviously, we've still got one eye on the World Cup, which is edging ever closer, but we do need to highlight the kind of top performers as time goes by and who we should be looking out for come the World Cup. We're going to go through five, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on who you would be picking if you were to pick five of your own. For this one, I've written up a piece for Planet Rugby, so link down in the description to that one. Often got a wee bit more detail, and plus there is a heap of other rugby content going on at Planet Rugby right now. Kind of unsurprisingly, seeing as the Rugby World Cup is just around the corner. First guy I'm going to go with is an Italian, and he is an Italian player who seems to have many names. I know him as Ange Capuzzo, but I have also heard him, heard him called Capuzzo. And this weekend, uh, what did the commentator call him? Capuzio. So his name seems to get a lot of different treatments, but whatever his name is, the Italian fullback had a pretty good game. Now, the Romanians had a red card early against the Italians, and they've not looked very good thus far. The Romanians, they got a hiding by Georgia, they got beaten by the USA, so it's been a pretty bad build-up to their Rugby World Cup, but I mean, it was kind of refreshing to see the Italians just open up and put it on a big scoreline against another team. Because they got some exciting players, man. Monte Iwane, Paolo Odogwu playing on one wing. And then they got Capuozzo at the back. He was just on absolute fire. If you haven't seen the game, he gets two tries. One of them, the Italians actually get charged down. And he kind of is the first guy to react by putting boot to ball. Chases ahead, you know, a bit of, good bit of football skills, gathers the ball, and then just puts the hammer down to go on for a try. 60 meter run. The other one, it's kind of rugby league style finish where he gets an offload from Halafihi, the number eight, grabs it, and then just uh, dives over to dot down in the corner before the Romanian defender can get to him. I mean, yeah, two pretty bloody slick tries, but if you want some stats, the Italians had like a 1,000-plus run meters in their game against Romania, which is often more than two teams combined will get. So they were running right. I think it was 1,100 and something. And Capuozzo contributed 248 of them which is genuinely more than some entire teams will get in the game of rugby so cup also was just getting runs for fun he finished with five clean breaks which is more than anybody else this week he finished with eight defenders beaten which is first equal this week um yeah he was just on absolute fire so if you're new zealand if you're france i don't know how worried you are about watching the italians give the romanians a hiding but you'll certainly be looking the likes of a couple of so and going, hmm, maybe just keep an eye on that guy. Another one I'm going to go with this time, it's a Ford. Uh, it's a kind of, I want to say lower reputation guy and that he's a relative newcomer to international rugby. He's old Kian Prendergast. Played number eight for Ireland at the weekend. And he's got the likes of Van der Fleer and Omani, two kind of legends of that current Irish squad, alongside him. And he's got Caelan Doris, who's the incumbent number eight, uh, on the bench. So a lot of pressure on Kian Prendergast, or you could say a lot of experience to support him. But man, he was playing with confidence. He had more carries than any other Irish forward. He was, um, you know, just cracking through the carries. More run meters, which makes sense if you got the most carries. He was one of only three Irish defenders to get through double figures in the tackles. I think he was only behind... Van der Fleer and Byrne, uh, Tyg Byrne. But um, yeah, he was just yeah playing real real rough and tumble. I mean, the main things that I, I liked is actually not necessarily like he was because he wasn't getting any kind of huge clean breaks or anything, but just doing his core role. Like England kicked Ireland the ball. That's part of England's strategy to get the ball forward. And uh, when Mac Hansen takes it, they contest. England want to, want to win the ball back at the breakdown or at least get a penalty. But who's there securing the ball for them as Matt Hansen is trying to place the ball so um, you know so the Irish can keep playing next phase? Kian Prendergast is the man that Ben Earl can't move. Later on, when uh, that leads to a try. That leads to a Bundy Arkees try. You know, Ireland are able to secure that ball and then essentially attack on, attack on the counter from that kick. Uh, later on, Ireland are hammering the English line. Mara Toje, one of the best kind of pilferers in the business. He's trying to get over the ball. Kim Prendergast in his way. Like, he's just a really hard man to move. And then later on, when the Irish are five metres out, it's Kim Prendergast who pops the ball to uh, Gibson Park, who pops it to Byrne, who pops it out to the wing for a try. So just the presence of mind, he's probably getting the call, but not to just, wow, I'm five metres out, I'm a forward, I'm just going to truck it up. 
you know, just a good bit of quick hands to keep the ball moving. So smart decision making, mature, and um, yeah, really, really busy. Big tackles, big carries, big work at the breakdown. Phenomenal stuff. I think he even won a line out. So well done to Kim Prendergast. Um, another kind of younger guy would be Kane Moody from South Africa. He put on a show, kind of like Kapu Otso, managed to finish with a couple of tries. And one thing I love about Moody is he's just, he's tall. <laughs> he's really tall. He's like six foot two. He's 1.9 meters. He's a big guy. Like Colby's great. Aaron's is great, great footwork. And Mpimpi just seems to not age. He's still got the gas, but he's not as tall as Moody. None of them are as tall as Moody. And he's great in the air. He's genuinely a big time aerial threat. And they used that. They kicked it to him when he beat um, the fullback, Kai Evans. He beat him in the air. That led to a South African overlap where they were able to spread it. That's the one where Dale Indy kicks it ahead. And you're thinking, oh, they've blown a try. But it was a great little win for Moody in the air. But at least to a try anyway. Because um, one of the Welsh guys passes at Jesse Creel. But yeah, kind of a couple of phases before a try. Who's the guy winning at the air? Kane Moody. Good to see that height in action. He scores two tries. Uh, one of them he gets... Which is the proper finishes, a finishes try. Like the, the hard work's mostly been done. He just has to kind of run at the right angle to make sure the onrushing Welsh defender can't grab him and he doesn't really get a hand on him. So good finish from Moody there. He's got a bit of pace. And um, then a great defensive read to uh, pick out that intercept ball from, um, was it Williams? Yeah, scores a second. So good bit of pace, good bit of height. Good bit of nous. And like one of the times when he did get defeat, uh, beaten out wide, he ran down Sam Costello, who was the guy who ended up making the big break for Wales. He might have been kind of beaten on the outside, but he just like, no, nah, I'm just going to run you down. So a good bit of determination from uh, the young guy as well. So yeah, really pleasing. Hope he gets some more game time because I genuinely think he offers something a bit different. He's got gas, he's got power, he's got height. Good on him. Bit of determination too. Uh, next guy I'm going to go is a Frenchman. An old Jonathan Dante, and it wasn't really his stereotypical big blockbusting carries in this one. It was more his defending. He made a bunch of tackles in this game. I mean, the dude's 110 kilos, so he can also be kind of a bit of an immovable object at times, and he proved that at the breakdown. But I mean, 15 from 15 tackles, he's the third top tackler of that game, and the top tackler by a back this week pretty easily most of the backs didn't get double figures there were a couple i think vonsant might have also got uh, a similar number and one of the fijian guys i think in the back line got double figures but most of the backs this week weren't double figures so dante to get 15 from 15 it's a pretty big shift I mean, he did get run over by the the fijian hook i don't want to run over he didn't get sat down by him but he couldn't stop him from going over the line from from very close range but it's not like he missed the tackle he just got driven backwards him and vonsant both got driven backwards but wasn't just his tackles though it's his ability to get over that ball kind of similar to Prendergast although less than a kind of defensive capacity and more of an offensive capacity at the breakdown trying to steal the ball instead of protect it Dante just proved such a hard man to get rid of first half first five minutes Villimata big carry Dante over the ball penalty and then Jaminet kicks it three points for France start of the second half it's pretty much a carbon copy I'm pretty sure it's Mata again Dante over the ball, penalty, kicks, three points for France. So six points pretty much directly from, from Dante's involvement. So, man, wins turnovers, makes tackles. I mean, he has six passes, he has six carries, but he wasn't kind of getting huge, huge run meters in this one. It wasn't really an offensive masterclass, but, man, defensively, he was a big, big, contributor to that French uh, performance, man. Remember in the second half, France didn't have a lot of ball. They were having to get through a lot of defensive work and uh, Dante certainly contributed there. And the last guy I'm going to go with is another one of the Springboks, an old Peter Stantu toy. He might be coming into some nice form at the right time. I mean, he's former player of the year, but remember he had that surgery on his leg couple of years ago now which they said he could have even lost his leg and he didn't really look to recapture that kind of form but he played pretty well against Wales didn't start well I mean it started okay uh when he kind of like scrapping he scrambled on loose ball one of the first guys to get there and that's that's pleasing you want that kind of desperation but then he gives away a penalty not long later for just being offside because I know you know Peter Steph likes to fly off the line just to make people's lives miserable 
but um, he was just a bit over eager, considered three points directly. So I was a little critical of him for that one. But from then on, he gets his timing pretty much spot on. I mean, the one that'll be in all the highlights is his intercept. Wales, hot on attack. They've got momentum. They pass it. And who's the man getting an intercept? I mean, I know Moody gets an intercept, but he's supposed to. He's a winger. But for this loose forward, I mean, I guess Makalu did it for France as well, to just pounce on that ball. Great defensive read. Great ball to Creel. Creel does well to hold off the uh, the Welsh tacklers to go over for the try. And he gets a try of his own. He could have had two. He gets held up once, but for his first one, I mean, Achilles Neyman's behind him, just shoving him. But a good bit of power for him to go over in a kind of less sexy than the intercept tr try for Creel one. But uh, they all count for the same amount of points, man. So a good, good loose forwards try, a bit of power. Uh, he's South Africa's top tackler. He makes 12 from 13. He's the top Springbok forward for carries with 14 carries. He makes 41 meters. Um, yeah, if you wanted Peter Steff to have a big shift going into the World Cup, get himself some form. I think this was certainly one of those efforts. So yeah, the, the, there's the top five. I mean, I mentioned Jesse Creel. He also had a pretty bloody good game. Uh, some of the other French performers uh, stood out as well. Big Antonio scored a great try for France. Um, some of the Fijian guys, Ran Randra, uh, scored a pretty good try for them as well. I could go on for days. Some of the Irish guys certainly put their hands up too. But, uh, and certainly the Italians, man, they were just having fun at times. But yeah, those are the top five article down in the description as well. Remember, guys, if you want to check out the written piece. But um, yeah, you guys, let us know your thoughts. And uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.